Welcome to Sunny Tucson, Arizona. This is Steve Wilson and the XCrafts eJets video tutorial series. In this video we are going to show you how to use the performance pages for the Tecton FMS. Getting into the cockpit and to the FMS, we see PERF for performance is at the lower right hand corner of the MCDU screen. And here we are. We have primarily three pages. We've got takeoff, cruise, and approach. Going back to performance one, we also have a thrust rating select page. Uh, this is where you would select the basically the, the governor, if you will, a way to limit thrust uh, for the particular mode of flight that you happen to be, happen to be in. Uh, this is fairly typical in modern airliner operation. Uh, essentially, it also it saves fuel while at the same time uh, preserving uh, the uh, longevity of the engines. Uh, for our purposes, in X-Plane uh, 11.26 and before, given that the, uh, the engine model is a little bit rambunctious, uh, it does give us a means uh, of taming that savage beast, if you will. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, we'll be using, uh, or you would normally be using, uh, the appropriate mode for uh, the mode of flight that you happen to be in. Uh, basically, you know, TO for takeoff, CL for climb, cruise is pretty obvious. TO, GA, TOGA, uh, takeoff go around, full thrust, and of course uh, conventional, if you will. Um, this is uh, the thrust rating that I would particularly choose uh, to use uh, for X plane 11, uh, 26, and uh, prior. Just a personal preference there. Uh, but mainly in performance here, uh, what we'll first do is uh, get into the cockpit and we'll. Uh, first of all, enter our payload weight, our fuel weights, get that all squared away. Uh, we will enter the flap setting we intend for takeoff, one, two, or four, generally two. Uh, that'll tell you uh, what uh, your trim requirement would be, and it will also give you the uh, current trim setting for the aircraft, and there's never any wrong time to be sure you've got the right trim. Uh, just for informational purposes, this will also give you the V1 settings uh, that you should expect uh, for this particular uh, weight and uh, trim setting, uh, and flap setting as well, of course. Let's see. So now we would go to perf page 2. Uh, this is, uh, you'd enter this page uh, before doing anything else in your flight plan, because you, what you'll want to do is enter your cruise airspeed, uh, and your initial and crew uh, initial cruise out excuse me your initial cruise altitude and your final cruise altitude uh, just uh, three um, critical entries if you will for your flight plan so I'm going to go ahead and get those uh, taken care of right now and uh, this flight's only going to be to 15,000 feet or so so I'm going to keep uh, the airspeed relatively tame at 270 I'll enter that. It, uh, it's always going to complain when it doesn't have a flight plan. Enter the initial cruise altitude, and it'll complain again. This is normal. And the final is already set, but we can manually set it ourselves if, if ourselves if we wish. Uh, some folks ask, why do we have two different cruise altitudes? Well, if you're taking off heavy and you're flying to a high altitude or you want to get to a high altitude to save fuel, sometimes what you'll do is uh, during your cruise you'll have what's called a step climb. So your initial cruise climb would be the highest altitude that you could probably reach uh, with uh, your heavy weight. And then as the aircraft burns off fuel and therefore becomes lighter, you can climb higher and uh, that would be uh, where you would set a final cruise altitude that was probably higher than your initial cruise altitude. Uh, from this point, uh, you can also enter your cruise wind direction, if you know it, pretty much an average of the winds that you expect, and of course the wind speed. Uh, and this, of course, applies a wind triangle to your route so that you can uh, estimate the amount of virtual distance that you'll fly. And of course, this will affect uh, your uh, basically your time and route and the fuel that you expect to burn. Uh, from this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter a complete flight plan, uh, but I will go ahead and speed that up. And now we're back. So as you can see, after you've entered your cruise airspeed and altitudes, and then go back in and enter your complete flight plan, 
once you're done, you get the total distance of your flight plan, the time and route, as well as the fuel. That takes care of all of your fuel calculations on PERF 2. And PERF 3, uh, your approach, this is giving you your, uh, a pre your predicted landing weight uh, and uh, the various speeds that would be appropriate for it. Icing would be a yes, no question. Uh, notice that that does affect your reference speeds. Uh, you can also override your weight here if you wish, if you need to. And uh, the last thing I'll show you is, well, no, no, the next to the last thing is if you are uh, fond of using the metric system, you can always change your units on PERF 3. And uh, one thing I'll also just share with you briefly here is uh, the VNAV profile setting. This is managed right here, uh, but we'll get into that uh, in the uh, vertical loads uh, video. That pretty much does it for this video, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.